third Saturday in October. Probably, if everyone was honest, between Alabama and Tennessee, the most looked forward to day of every year for Tennessee and Alabama fans. Well, folks, guess what? It's on the fourth Saturday of October this year, but it's no less important, and I'm no less excited. So let's talk about it. This is a proud moment for me. I'm proud of the friends that gathered here tonight. I'm proud of the 28 years that I've spent here at the University of Tennessee. I'm proud of the small part that I had in contributing to its remarkable growth throughout these years. I know you'll bear with me, however, when I say that I'm proudest of all of these boys of ours, the boys that played under me, who have achieved remarkable things in every walk of life in which they've been called upon to perform. Student, athlete, soldier, coach, businessman, professional man, are in the field of politics. To me, you are, you always have been, and you always will be the best. But I like even more than that to think of you as emblematic as living, breathing symbols of the stream of football players that is coming from every campus in our conference and throughout the whole nation in ever increasing number. Now may your tribe increase because to my mind in your strong bodies and your resolute minds there lies one of the great hopes of this country to repel the communist despots who seek to rule and ruin the world. To repel the communist despots who seek to rule and ruin the world. To repel the communist, to repel the communist, the communist, the communist, to repel the communist despots who seek to rule and ruin the world. Tennessee fans. It's beautiful to everybody that loves volunteer football. It's especially beautiful to me this time of year because it's fast approaching the third Saturday in October. Now, this year it's the fourth Saturday in October. Traditionally, third Saturday in October. For those of you watching this video who may have just climbed out from underneath the proverbial football rock. Every year on the third Saturday in October, two college football giants collide. Historically, these two teams have always been giants in the college football world. Now this year, of course, Tennessee is down. We're way down. In fact, we're just downright beat down. But, as so many before me have said, when these two teams come together, you throw out the record books. Take last year, for example. Nobody on planet Earth thought that game was going to come down to a shitty kick by Daniel Lincoln for Alabama to win. In fact, I would lay money that says every Alabama football fan on this planet thought they were going to just beat our ass by three or four touchdowns in that game. Didn't happen. There's a reason for that. Because when these two teams play, the records do not matter. Sure, there's been blowouts in this series. There's blowouts in every series. Two years ago, when Alabama came to Neyland Stadium, they ran not only our team, but our fans out of our own stadium. An event that better, by God, never happen again. It just better never happen again. 
It cost Philip Fulmer his job, and it cost thousands of Tennessee football fans their pride. I can only imagine how the players felt that day. Had to be disgusted. Maybe that played into the effort they put forward last year. I don't know. So we're going to talk just a little bit today about the third, but the fourth this year, Saturday in October. First of all, I want to address a couple of TTC things. Bill for Vols is the undisputed champion of trash talking, in my opinion. He brings the heat every week for the Tennessee Volunteers, and I don't care to even attempt to match him in trash talking ability. Bill is my buddy. Bill is not only my buddy on YouTube, Bill is my buddy in real life. It goes beyond YouTube with Bill and I. Bill, you are the man. You are the trash talking king when it comes to Tennessee football. And I nor anyone else in the Blue Tick Bullies will dispute that. As far as team loyalties, like we've both said before, you are the person, you are the first person I've met in my entire life that loves the Tennessee Volunteers as much as I do. So to that, it's time to kick some Alabama ass. I want to talk about this game the way I want to talk about this game, not the way the damn trash talking circle dictates the way that I talk about this game. I don't care about going after fans in the Alabama nation. I don't care about promoting the blue tick bullies as being better than the Alabama nation because that shit is all strictly opinion. I don't have an opinion one way or the other. Bandwagon fans, I don't give two turds hanging off a pregnant cat's ass who's a bandwagon fan for Alabama Nation. I just don't care. Who somebody else has pulled for their life does not matter to me. I don't give a shit who's a bandwagon fan in the Blue Tick Bullies. It doesn't affect how I feel about that right there. Several things have been talked about in the last week on talk radio in the Knoxville area, one of which was Steve Spurrier. Whether or not he's the best coach in the SEC compared to Bear Bryant. Now, it is widely thought of that Paul Bear Bryant is the best coach in the history of the Southeastern Conference and college football. What do I think about that? Well, let's look at a few things here. Paul Bear Bryant was a great coach, no doubt about it. Won a shit ton of national championships, won a, a bucket full of conference championships, and basically when your team played his team, you knew that probably you were going to get your ass beat most times. That's just a fact. Um, he coached at several places, and finally he coached at Alabama where he rang up most of his records, if not all of his records, and laid waste to college football. Great coach, great man, an incredible leader, an innovator, you might even say, in the world of college football. Nobody can dispute that, at least nobody with a, you know, a full bag of marbles. Um, but I want to talk about somebody that Bear Bryant has talked about before in his past. Well, who in the world is Robert Neeland? I don't know, just some deadbeat that had a stadium naf named after him, right? Wrong. Robert Neeland. Robert Reese Neeland. Bob Neeland! What's that all about? He left his post at the University of Tennessee two times to go fight for his country. He was a brigadier general. Oh my God, the list is just incredible at the things this man did. Not in football, but in life. But let's keep it football here, okay? We'll keep it strictly football. Hell, we'll even keep it Tennessee versus Alabama. So many people like to talk about history in this trash-talking circle and in this whole college football thing. I've even been victim of it. So we're going to talk history. And contrary to popular belief, history does not start when a person is born. It just don't. History is history. And that means all of history. Robert Reese Bob Neeland. Hell of a guy. Shit, I wish he was alive today so I could shake his hand and just be in awe in his presence. Several things that he did in his career. He never, let me say that again, he never, did you catch that? He never, ever, ever coached a losing season. Damn, that's impressive. He also never lost to a team he played more than once. 
That's damned incredible. There's lots of things this man never did. What are some things he did do? He had four national championships, 1938, 1940, 1950, 1951. You can debate the authenticity of those all you want, but if we're going to do that, we're going to start talking about Alabama's national title. So let's just not go there because that's a whole different argument in itself. The record books say that Robert Nealon had four national championships. That's what I'm going with. The man had nine unbeaten seasons. Nine unbeaten seasons. Let's talk about some other things that General Bob Nealon did that no one else did. Talking about a man who is hardly ever mentioned as the greatest college football coach ever. He was the first coach to go to all four major bowl games. Rose, Orange, Sugar, Cotton. First to do that. Pretty impressive, huh? Also. How about consecutive shutouts? 17 consecutive games he shut out the opponent. 71 consecutive quarters he shut out the opponent. Amazing. Simply amazing. I'm not here today to talk about who is a better coach, Paul Bear Bryant or Robert Reese Neeland. That's a debate that could go on forever and ever and ever. And it's always going to boil down to what an Alabama fan's opinion is versus what a Tennessee volunteer fan's opinion is. But I'll tell you what the opinion is of the two men involved. One time, Bear Bryant was talking. Perhaps talking to one person, perhaps talking to a group of people. I do not know. It does not matter. But the direct quote from Paul Bear Bryant was, I've been called the greatest damn coach in the country, but I learned everything from General Neyland. Everything. I learned everything. I learned everything from Neyland, the man said. How do you guys feel about that? How do you Bama fans feel about that? Oh, and one more thing I failed to mention. Neyland was 7-0 and against Bear Bryant. He never lost to Bear Bryant. Bear Bryant took to his grave the thought of knowing that he never won a football game against General Robert Reese Neyland. We've had our ass beaten a lot of times by Alabama. Way many more so than we've put on them. There's no disputing the facts and the statistics. Alabama's better than us. They've got more wins, they've got more bowls, they've got more bowl appearances, they've got more, they've got more everything than us. We can't argue that. I would be a fool to stand here today and tell you that statistically my team is better than Alabama. I would just be an idiot to do that. I would look like a blithering idiot. Now to the game. Do we have a realistic shot at this game this weekend? Hell no. We're playing with 60-some scholarship players over 30 who are playing their first season of college football. Alabama is a team that is seasoned. They have won the national championship last year. They won 432,000 games before they finally lost to South Carolina two weeks ago. Look at this game from an outsider and you're thinking, poor Tennessee, they don't have a chance. Well, I say to that bullshit. When the orange is on and the crimson is on, we got a shot. And I'm here to tell you all today that Tennessee, my big orange, my power T from Tennessee, the team that I love more than just about everything else on this earth, is going to kick Alabama's ass this weekend. There upon the fields of friendly, of friendly strife are sown the seeds that on other days, on other fields, will yield the fruits of victory.